Hi everyone, welcome to Rec at Home, brought to you by the Community Recreation and Conservation and Interpretation Divisions of Arlington County's Department of Parks and Recreation. My name is Miss Maddie and I'm one of the naturalists here at Gulf Branch Nature Center. Today we're going to be creating monarch butterflies using folded pieces of paper. The adult monarch butterflies that can be found right now in Arlington are getting ready to make a very long journey south to Mexico for the winter. They were born here having hatched from eggs and have grown as caterpillars, then pupated as chrysalises, and emerged as adult butterflies. Like all butterflies, monarchs have four wings and their wings are colored brightly orange and black. Those colors that we find on a monarch butterfly's wings serve as a warning sign to larger animals like birds that might want to eat them. They tell those larger animals like birds that monarchs taste really bad. So in a lot of ways, the colors that we find on monarch butterfly's wings actually work to help protect the monarch butterfly. Let's get started. For our project today, you will need a piece of paper. If you already have square paper, like this piece of origami paper here, that's great. But if you don't, a regular rectangular piece of computer paper will work just fine. You'll also need a pair of scissors, orange and black markers, and then something that you can twist, whether it's pipe cleaners, a twist tie that you would find on a bag of bread, or even a small piece of ribbon. Like always, as we work today, we're going to remember to try our best. If we don't get our folds or our cuts right the first time, no big deal. We can always start over and try again. We're also going to try to remember to be safe and kind with our materials and space. So let's treat our materials respectfully and be careful when we're using our scissors. To get started, if we don't have a square piece of paper already, like the one here, we can use a rectangular piece of paper and make it square. I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll start by taking the bottom corner and bringing it up to the top edge so that the edges match. And then we'll press down along the fold. And if you can see, there is this extra little bit of paper over here. We'll use our scissors safely to cut that piece off. When we open our piece of paper back up, you can see we've created a square. If we don't already have a colorful piece of paper like the one we have here, no worries. We're going to use our markers to create a colorful piece of paper. And I'm going to use this monarch butterfly as inspiration. I'll take my orange marker and color in the whole square. I'm going to do my best to make sure that my marker stays on my paper. This is part of being respectful of our workspace. But one thing we can do if we're worried about getting the marker off of our paper is to put a piece of scrap paper like newspaper underneath our work area so that if we do get the marker off of the paper we're working on, it's not a big deal. If your marker starts to dry out in the middle of all of this coloring, you can put the top back on and give it a little bit of a rest for a minute. Or if you have a second orange marker, you can use that too. If you don't have markers at home and you only have crayons, crayons work fine as well. Now that I've colored my whole square orange, I'm going to take my black marker and try to create some of the designs that I see on the monarch butterfly's wing. So I'm looking at the outside edges of the monarch butterfly's wing and seeing that black come all the way around the outside edges. And I'm also seeing black lines or veins that come all the way through the monarch's wings. 
Again, if your marker starts to run out of color in the middle of all this coloring, you can put the top back on and give it a minute to rest. Or if you have another set of markers, you can use another marker. Okay, now that I'm done coloring, I'm gonna take my markers and get them out of my workspace since we won't be using them anymore. Our next step today is to take our scissors and cut our square piece of paper in half. And I'm gonna cut it in half right down the middle this way so that I have some top wings that will be together and bottom wings that will be together. Here we go. For our next step, I'm going to take the top half of my square that had my top wings colored on it and I'm going to fold those in half this way so that the color is on the outside of the fold. Then I'm going to open them back up and I'm going to work on folding the corners in to that central line that I created when I did the first fold in half. I'll start with the bottom left corner and then take the top right corner and bring it down to meet the bottom left. Then I'll go to the bottom right corner, fold it up to that center line, and bring the top right corner down to meet the bottom right corner. Okay, the next set of folds are a little bit tricky. So if you don't get it right the first time, that's not a big deal. You can also ask any grown-up that lives with you if you need a little extra help. We're going to take the top part of our piece of paper here and fold it downwards, just like that. Then we're going to take it and fold it in the opposite direction. If you've ever folded a paper fan going back and forth, back and forth, that's what we're doing here. These folds should be pretty familiar to you. We'll do the same thing on the bottom. We're gonna fold the bottom up just a little bit and then take the whole thing and fold it back in the other direction. Then we'll fold back in the other direction again. And for the last part, we're gonna take the whole thing and fold it in half. All right, so our top set of wings is good to go. Now we need to do our bottom set of wings. We'll take our rectangular piece of paper and turn it this way so that the short side is on the top and the bottom and the long sides are on the sides. We're gonna be creating the same kind of folds as if we were making a paper fan going back and forth, back and forth. And we'll start at the top and work our way down. All right, now that we're done folding our bottom set of wings, we're gonna take it and fold it in half this way. We'll do the same thing with our top set of wings. Take it and fold it in half this way. Now we need to join the two top wings to the two bottom wings to create our complete butterfly. To do that, we'll use our twisty item, whether it's our pipe cleaner, a piece of ribbon, or a twist tie. I really like these twist ties because almost everybody has them at home. And when we put them around the wings of our butterfly, there's usually a little bit left over to create two antennae, which all insects have, including butterflies. So you can see them here in the picture of the monarch. So here we go. We're gonna put our two pairs of wings together. 
we'll put the twist tie around them and then we're going to twist so that it holds tight. You'll see there's a little bit left over to make two tiny antenna. And our final step is just to open it back up so we can see the wings. And I actually put this bottom set of wings on backwards. So I'm gonna turn them around so we can see the color. All right, we'll pull those wings open. If you have some glue at home and you want to glue these two pieces together, you can, but you don't have to. Same thing for the top. We're gonna to open up those top wings so we can see that beautiful coloring that we did. And there we go. Ta-da! You've made a beautiful monarch butterfly. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for Wreck at Home. We'll see you again soon for another project.